absolutely everything can be analyzed from a feminist perspective. Even Robot Monster. It begins with a young boy, Johnny, playing like he's an astronaut. His sister Carla wants to play house with him, but he ignores her in favor of ray guns and robots. This illustrates the classic gender roles, where the masculine is an active, aggressive nature, while the feminine is passive and nurturing, associated with the home, as opposed to exploring the great unknown. The kids run into a pair of archaeologists, both men, as the academic field was very masculine dominated in the 50s. The kids' older sister, Alice, and mother, Marta, soon join them, and the young archaeologist, Roy, immediately develops an interest in Alice. She wears high heels, emphasizing the divide between the masculine and the feminine. The family then returns to their picnic in the middle of a bunch of rocks, and Johnny asks if the mother will ever remarry, hoping that if she does, the man will be a scientist. This reinforces the heteronormative nuclear family model. After everyone settles for a nap, Johnny goes back to the cave. Suddenly, lightning strikes as an alien spaceship enters the atmosphere and dinosaurs appear. Okay. The dinosaurs fight for a bit, and then high-tech equipment appears in the cave and generates bubbles. Johnny wakes up and adds cave paintings, but hides as Roman appears. Roman is an evil alien cyborg that looks nothing like a guy in a gorilla suit wearing a diver's helmet. Using a video screen, Roman reports to his superior, the Great Guidance. Were there monkeys? Some terrifying space monkeys maybe got loose? Roman describes how he's destroyed all of humanity with his calcinator beam. Too late they planted against me. Their resistance pattern showed some intelligence, but all are gone now. But the Great Guidance corrects him. There are eight humans still alive. The deep voices of the aliens correspond with patriarchal gender roles, as the masculine voices are associated with great strength. Johnny runs home to a bombed-out house surrounded by humming wires. The old archaeologist is now his father, and he explains that Johnny shouldn't leave the wires because they keep Roman from finding them. What's interesting is that he says he and Alice came up with the invention. The only reason we are still alive is that your sister Alice and I worked out a way to reflect his deadly beams away from the house. Alice defies her gender role by being capable in engineering, though I suspect as a point of humor akin to the film Doctor Who and the Daleks. Johnny reports the Roman sighting. Johnny wants to try to kill him, but the father doesn't think that it's possible to kill him. Roman calls them instead to try to get them to surrender, but they just try to ignore him. Fool humans, there is no escape. If Roman finds them, They'll kill themselves quickly to prevent his painful execution. Roy arrives to inform them that there are two other people alive on Earth, Jason and McLeod, and he's figured out why. The scientist father created a serum to cure all illnesses, and the people he experimented on are now immune to Roman's death ray. There are more people left on board a space station, so Roy wants Jason and McLeod to go up to the space station and immunize everyone there. Roy and Alice work on the video screen for 12 days, trying to alter it so that they could contact the space station without Roman intercepting the transmission. When the rocket ship goes up, Roman finds out. He contacts the humans to show them how he can destroy both the rocket ship and the space station. The next day, the humans contact Roman to negotiate. The father tries to appeal to Roman's romanity and introduces the individuals that Roman is trying to kill. I am built to have no emotions. Suddenly, Roman feels a connection to Alice and demands to speak with her alone. She agrees. This is the start of Roman's sick lust for the human woman Alice. Roman is a bit of an ape man, and he fits in the tradition of using gorillas as rape monsters. Based on the bad scientific assumption that gorillas love to rape human women, and Roman is something of an evolution of King Kong. Comparison can also be made to Nosferatu. Once the call's over, the family forbids Alice from meeting Roman, and they physically restrain her. They kind of allude to the sexual undertones of Roman's interest in Alice. Is Alice gonna have a date with Roman? They disapprove because her meeting a gorilla alien cyborg is something good girls just don't do. You mean uh, certain things nice girls don't do? And it would be degrading. I just don't happen to believe that any human being should degrade himself in order to survive. The men in the family thus keep her from being one of those girls. It's essentially the Madonna whore dichotomy. Unfortunately, Johnny sneaks out and meets Roman. 
He accidentally tells him too much, and Roman learns how to counteract the serum. Johnny goes back home to tell the bad news. Meanwhile, Alice and Roy go looking for Johnny. So you managed to get your shirt off. When Roman shows up. Roy takes the role of male romantic hero by picking up and carrying Alice out of sight, keeping her passive while he is active. Roman leaves, but they start making out in the bushes and possibly have sex. What is interesting about their hookup is how it doesn't happen immediately. Roy tries to kiss her a few times, only to have Alice pull away. This is an extension of the previous conflict, where Alice has to prove she's a good girl by not acting on her own sexual desires. She has to make Roy try, and then allow him. They return to the house later and ask the father to marry them. After which, Alice and Roy leave to go on their honeymoon. Yeah, good idea. Carla runs after them to give them a gift. Oh, I love my pretty little flower. Oh, I love my pretty little flower. Oh, I love my flower. And on the way back, she runs into Roman, who strangles her. In addition to her age, Carla's femininity makes her seem the weakest and most precious member of the group, allowing her death to have a great impact on the family that emphasizes Roman's evil in a way similar to the monster in Frankenstein killing the girl. Roman then goes after Alice and Roy. He fights off Roy and kidnaps Alice, kicking and screaming. He explains that he needs the machine at the cave to get strong enough to kill her. When he gets there, however, he starts to perv on her. Suppose I were human. Would you treat me like a man? She is very much the quintessential damsel in distress in the hands of an evil, lustful man. If a Roman and not a human. Johnny comes up with a plan to distract Roman. The humans contact him and demand a quick death. Roman agrees, but wants to rape Alice first. The Great Guidance interrupts. He sees Roman as corrupted by humanity, as he is now passionate and independent likely making a parallel between the Great Guidance and Stalin. The Great Guidance orders him to kill the humans. Johnny distracts him long enough for the others to rescue Alice. The Great Guidance doesn't like Romans refusing to kill Alice, so he kills Roman. Of course, it wasn't the Great Guidance. It was Beauty killed the beast. The Great Guidance summons dinosaurs to eat the humans while he destroys the Earth. Fortunately, Johnny wakes up from his concussion. It was all a dream. Or was it? <laughs> <laughs>